I'm a wanderer of the soul Before the end I plan to be whole But I know I'll lose myself along the way What's gone is gone What's past is past Let me leave what belongs in the past The road ahead is quite unclear Let me walk in despite fear The road stretches over the hills And I've got many debts to pay Somewhere on their own way My pay is not gold Hi, welcome to Rail Tales Are you ready for a Pathfinder 2E conversion of an adventure path and a video game? Well, I'm not sure that we are, but hey-ho, here we go. Once again, back with Kingmaker. My name's Mark Alexander-Cross. I am your GM for this game. And below me, as ever, is Dave, Greg, Jack, and Lexi, as we're going to be playing. I suppose I suppose this is definitely a, an official conversion of the Kingmaker Adventure Path. Uh, one slight thing before we get on with the recap. If you notice above me in the overlay today... I've actually changed up how hero points are going to work because I'm not going to lie and I've made an announcement about this already this is a pre-recorded game and so to keep track of the hero points easier I've decided to get all the hero points and throw them into one pool now I will explain how this works exactly after we have done the recap because there's a few twisting of the rules in order for a hero point pool to work but nothing overly complicated. So, let's settle in and let's catch up with the story so far. Okay, so, the last time we played Kingmaker, our group of adventurers were at the Call for Heroes at the Eldori Estate in the city of Restov in the nation of Bravoy. Lady Germande Aldori, the Aldori Sword Lords, was preparing to launch an expedition into the Stolen Lands with a call for heroes. This call for heroes was bringing in adventurers from all different walks of life, giving them charters to go out and explore the Stolen Lands and essentially set up their own, well, it doesn't have to be a kingdom, but this is Kingmaker, so let's just call it a kingdom. However, our four adventurers were pulled to the side at the personal request of Lady Eldori and they were asked to essentially keep an eye on one of the fellow adventurers at the Call for Heroes, a gnomish adventurer called Tartuccio. Basically, Lady Germandi has evidence but cannot confirm that Tartuccio may be a spy from a Bravoy enemy nation known as Pitax. So the party will ask, while they did their own exploration into the Stolen Lands, because the party are here to do that under their own powers as well. They have come to the Call for Heroes to claim a charter and make an exploration into the Stolen Lands themselves. But now they've agreed to essentially what is a side mission from Lady Germandi to keep an eye out for Tartuccio while they're out there in the Stolen Lands and see whether or not he's a spy and if he is, deal with them however you see fit. The late evening throughout a rupturous thunderstorm settled. <laughs> not completely though. Storm's going like the clappers out there. But the party were invited to stay at the manor for the night due to that horrible, horrible weather. And so they did with a nice peaceful restful sleep until they were rudely interrupted and awoken by several thugs who appeared to have infiltrated the manor and had been killing these adventurers that have come to the call for heroes. Even some of Lady Germandi's house guard has also fallen under these mysterious thugs is power and each of these thugs is strange they seem to have tears tattooed on their face under their left eye three black tears 
So, the party has come to call this group Black Tears. And, well, it was well figured out, because I'll even reveal that is what this group is called. But why are these Black Tear thugs doing this? Why have they put them up to this? No answers have been wrought so far. The party of characters have just checked all the other rooms and found multiple other adventurers at the Call for Heroes all lying dead on the floor. There is one particular exception. One of the rooms in the southwestern corner which belonged to a famous adventuring group known as the Iron Wraiths has been left relatively untouched. But, well, others have not been so lucky as the Iron Wraiths. And we concluded last session when the part with the party gathering up outside the western door, leading out into a internal garden courtyard that Lady Jamandi has here at her manor. But it was uh, the Magus Gel who of his whisper elf senses heard shuffling and movement from the other side of these double doors where it seems like sounds of their combat was heard and whoever is on the other side is preparing as Kelvin mouthed ambush we uh, bring today's session back in with some very famous words that my grandfather would have given to me on my wedding day if he had lived that long. Roll initiative. Oh. He was a very interesting man. Yeah, it's strange to say at a wedding. <laughs> Maybe it's long dice. He turned around and he was just like, I could just, in fairness, I could see him saying that for a joke. Mark, you're getting married. Roll initiative. This is going to be a thing. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but seriously, everyone roll up in this. Oh, God damn. Hello. <laughs> uh, Staying strong to my cause. Yeah, is it probably just a perception one for Balric? Uh, yes, this will mostly be perception, except for Isabella, who is uh, who was deliberately stealthing uh, through her exploration action using avoid notice. Yes, now my shield is raised, though, for what that's worth. Uh, yes, uh, feel free if you wish to drag that status back onto your token. Oh, you all yes. have scouting as well. Lovely. All right. So the scouting should also be automatically applied. Yep, it has done. We can see that on the foundry. So let's go in token order and let's get some initiatives. So we'll start with uh, Andin. Uh, 19. Okay, and then uh, Kelvon. 7. Walrock. 22. And finally, go on then, Lexi. What was Isabella's initiative? I rolled another natural 20 on initiative for a 28. No one knows where Isabella is right now. All right. So, we start at the top of the turn order. And it is actually uh, your turn, Isabella, or do I sense a hold in your future? I'm going to have to delay my action until someone opens the door, at least. All right. So. <clears throat> next up. All right. Something happens. Then it's the turn of... Bulwark Silverstone. All right, Bulwark, free actions. You're up. All right, uh, I'm going to start by just kind of glancing towards my allies and silently just kind of giving a nod and making sure that they're good for me to open the door and get the party started. Yep. I'm not yep. back. You haven't a goddamn faced. clue where Isabella is, so you have to assume she's ready. I'm sure it's a nod. All right, uh, I'm just going to... Push the door open in front of me. All right. Shield up the ready. I will say, actually, Jack, these are technically mm -hmm. double doors, so if you want, you're cool. With one action, I say you can open both of them at once, Dark Souls style. Why not? It's just, for, just for Dark Souls, we'll open both doors. All right, go for it. Open them up for one action. All right, here's what you see. 
This large indoor garden resembles a tropical paradise, similar to that of the Mogwani Expanse. Lush plants and flowering vines hang from the walls, while a slow-moving stream of water cuts through the center of this room, flowing lodgingly from north to south through stone drains. Planters filled with colorful flowers line the stream. Two narrow wooden bridges arch over the water, allowing passage from one side to the other. Partially submerged in the stream to the north stands a life-size marble statue depicting a half-elven woman adorned in armor, holding a rose and wielding a shield. Uh, Bulwark, as you have opened the double doors, you have triggered a ready to action. This ready to action right. comes from the individual who is standing over... Oh, hold on a second. Who is standing over... Yeah, hold on. Just double checking because I've got to get this right because one of them, I'm not going to lie, and will reveal has a bit of jank. But from this individual over here, they have prepped and readied a crossbow bolt, which is going to come at you your way. So, ready shot flies off. But 11 is not going to hit you, I presume. No, the trap bounces off of Ulrich's raised shield. All right. So, Ulrich, you've got another two actions remaining, my friend. What would you like to do? All right. I don't think Balrog is crazy enough to just go rushing in head first, especially since he wouldn't have time to attack and raise his shield. So I believe what he's going to do for his second action is I'm going to move uh, five feet diagonally, technically, or ten feet, to get in front of my Vegas ally. And then, uh, or is it him? Or that is Kelvin. My ally. Yeah, that is Kelvin. Yep. Right. Yeah, I'm going to get in front of him, and then for my third action, I'm going to raise my shield and say, Stay behind me! Alright then, so Ray's shield stays up even further. Okay, now let's bring them all into the initiative order properly. Make them visible, as they can all be seen now. It is now the time for another Black Tier members go. <clears throat> can I, uh... <laughs> could I spring in here? Alright then. In comes the full metal card again. So, Isabella, you come back into the initiative order. Yeah, uh, we did discuss this, but I'm just going to double check with you. I'm allowed to lean around the corner and take a pop. Hmm. That's interesting. You have a look at your point of view for a second. This is what I asked for token lean for. Right, well, token lean's on. Yeah, if you hold Q, you can sort of lean with the, the character out of the doorway. If you don't like it, we can turn it back off and just make, go back to normal. Let's have a look. At, let's try this. Oh, Q. Oh, didn't work for me. Okay. Um, I would say stick with the rules of the game. Uh, let me think. Uh, hold on. So if Isabella was just around the corner there's a wall in the way hold on i'm just gonna move your token down one to see what sort of view you would have okay uh you'll be able to see two the only one you would have a real clear shot at from a lean round the corner it's gonna be this one over here Absolutely, I'm fine with that. So, I will allow a lean round the corner because I don't think there's any mechanical rules in regards to leaning. So, uh, no, the line of sight's a bit sketchy. So, I will make a homebrew rule for this if you think this is fair, Lexi. Um, if you want to take a lean shot, I will say that you can, but they will grant a soft. They will get a plus one soft cover bonus to their AC because you're using a great big friggin' Argibus rifle. Ah, uh, that. Yeah, that works for me. They're flat-footed anyway, so they. Yeah. 
evens out to a minus one. Okay, so, all right, no, not a problem. Okay, so uh, you lean out and uh, feel free to make a target and take your shot. All right. The, and we'll remember to apply the uh, flat foot at the start. Yeah, yeah. Where is it? Oh. All right, that 21 was a hit. Go ahead and uh, give damage, please. That'll be eight damage. All right, fantastic stuff. All right, let's apply the damage. How does it look like? Clear shot, clear kill. Huh. That was my only target. <laughs> okay, Alexi, two actions remaining. What else do you have, my dear? I feel like I asked this last week, but I'm going to ask it again. Uh, these, like, big vases in the, in the hallway. Not big enough to take cover behind? I'm afraid not. Deck. Uh, I think Isabella will, uh, she'll spend her, her second action to move across the hallway to the next room. Lovely. Uh, and then the third action will be a reload. All right. Lovely stuff. All right. Now we go on to that member of the Black Tears. Okay. They, let's get a quick room. Okay. What they're going to do is they are ready with their dagger so they're gonna uh, five technically it's a diagonal no because of the bridge no so five ten fifteen twenty twenty five they're gonna use two actions step in and uh, they are going to uh, make an attack on Ulrich from that position. So. Alright. That's not very nice. Natural 20, oh. Ulrich. Yes. <laughs> okay. Let's roll some damage. Uh, oh, that didn't double again. Oh, I forgot to hit the critical button. But that doubles, so Borok, you take eight points worth of damage. Are you getting your shield block in there? Uh, let me see. Yeah, my shield will take three damage, but I think I'm going to use my... Uh, that's a lot of damage I'll have to absorb. So I'm going to use my shield block reaction. Okay, so the shield soaks five, I believe? Yes. Okay, so... Uh, total, so uh, yeah, there's a hardness of five. Yes, that's basically soak damage. So the shield soaks five, and then you and your shield takes the remaining three points worth of damage, Bulwark. All right, I'm done to my shield. I think you said you were handling damage for us, Chris. Sorry? Uh, I took the minus three off my shield, but you're doing our health, correct? Yes. Um, oh, yes, that's correct. Oh, oh, yes, you're right. Yes, 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 yes. That's That's correct, yes. Thank you kindly. All right. Yes. Sorry, everyone. I'm a bit tired today. I'm coffee powered. So, okay. That concludes that uh, that one's turn. I want some coffee. And now it's the turn of Andon. Andon, their turn. What do you got, my friend? All right. What have I got? Indeed. I think I've got some more light, to be honest. I think I've got some more electricity now that this fellow has moved into my line of sight. <laughs> Aha! I don't have to worry about cover or anything for that. So it's 30 feet and... Oh, is it both targets are within the 30 feet or does it like jump? 30 feet to one and then 30 feet to the next one. I need a reminder, please uh, bring up the electric arc. An arc of lightning leaves from one target to another. So, I believe it has to be two targets within a 30-foot range of you. Okay. In which case, we'll do something else. No worries. 
And I think I'm going to try and nail this guy that I can see with a ray of frost. All right, so you're going for the one at the back? Go for it. Yep. All right. Hold to attack then, please. That's not going to work. That is a natural nine, but you have four hero points in the pool. Ben one to reroll, or you're going to hold off for now? Would anybody mind if I rerolled that? Go for it if you want. Yeah, sure. Go for it. All right, let's do it. All right, you're down to three. Give us that reroll shot. And we'll keep the new result. That's bad, huh? What was? What did you roll, please? Uh, 22. Lovely, that is a hit. Uh, please give me damage. Well, give the enemy damage, not me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, please roll damage. Okay, that's going to be eight points of first damage. How does he chill out? Oh, um, so Andon has a small um, wooden token roughly carved into the shape of a snowflake which um, they take in the hand and kind of flip it up like you would a coin. And as it does, it slowly like freezes into a small crystal and they take, you know how you put your hand under your mouth and blow on something? Yeah. And it blow and they blow it and the little snowflake washes out and causes this, you know, chilling beam, I imagine. And it just freezes the dude uh, entirely to the bone and they shatter. All right. Nice shatter. Nice take out. All right. Does that and conclude your turn, Andon? I think you may have an action left. I do indeed. Um, and for that last one, I am going to raise my own shield. Lovely. All right. It was the turn of this black tier, uh, who is dead down here. But uh, something actually drops out of her hand, actually, as she falls dead from that shot by Isabella. Oh, we had mocked. It's Alchemist Fire, that's their name. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't have seen I... that, but that was a personal reminder to myself. But nicely done, taking them out first. I didn't even notice. Yes, uh, then it was going to be that Black Tier members go, but they're dead as well. So next up, two left. Uh, Kel, you're up. Uh, I, he, I'm just going to move... Hang on, I've gotten the wrong tool. That's never helpful. I'm just going to move to there. Yep. And then I'm going to use two actions to hold a strike when this if this guy comes up. Oh, right. So you're holding a strike. Okay. Yep. Now back to the top of the round. It is the remaining black tier members uh, go. So. This one. Let's see. I'm going to give them a section check for their first action as they look at Kelvin. Okay, on a 12, they don't quite realize that the uh, Elven Magus is ready in. So, they're gonna run up with the dagger and attempt to shank the Elven Magus, but Kel, you have the first attack. If yep. you would like to use your hold action. I shall. All right. Uh, that'll be a 14, which uh, I guess misses. Uh, 14. Uh, let's see. I'm getting used to the targeting now, so it usually oh, tells yeah, me. Oh, yeah. The... It's, it's all right. Don't worry. AC, unfortunately, that is a miss. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Oh. So it's then going to uh, use its dagger. Uh, let's see. On the Magus. Actually, no. I'm going to attempt to grapple you first, Kelvin. 
Right. Uh, so uh, it's going to make an athletics check. Uh, what's your fortitude, DC? Uh, 17. All right. It's going to try and grapple you to begin with. 15 fails. So basically, it was going to try and grab and then shank. Uh, but instead, it's just going to then uh, just regularly attack you for its next action with the first map being applied. And that five is a critical miss. All right, that concludes that black tier member's turn. Uh, Borak, you're up. All righty. Uh, Bulrug is going to, uh, well, I guess I'm just going to try and lay my axe into the dude to my north. I'm upset. My shield got dented. All right, sure. Give me a target. Give me an axe swing. All right. Uh, the target is at alt and then you select them. Uh, yeah. Them Hold alt and left click. Got it. All right. So, never target more than one enemy at a time. Though. Oh, dear. Yeah, it just doesn't work if you. All right, here we go. Uh, that is unfortunately only a 12 on the first swing. Uh, that is a miss. Alrighty. Uh, I am going to go ahead and attempt a second swing. Uh, uh, so this will have the minus five on it. Yes. First multi attack penalty button, please. Come on, Barrett. Well, that's not going to do it. That's an 11. Alright, that 11 is a push. Uh, Sorry, Barrett? Yeah. Uh, that's third action. I am going to raise my shield. All right, so shield stays up. Okay. Uh, Isabella, it's your turn. Hello. Hello. Uh, in the interest of saving ammunition whilst we deal with these middling ghoul goons, uh, Isabella's going to let her rifle come back down to its natural crutch position, so she's just got it in one hand now. Uh spend an action to pull out the hand crossbow that I swiped from some previous middling goon. Uh, my second action I shall use to walk out where I can see B. I said my second action I shall use to walk out where I can see people, please. The walls work. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I was trying to move around, but I forgot it tries to move it in a straight line. Right. Uh, I can just see one of these men around the corner, so I'm going to probably have some ridiculous cover, but I'll still take the shot at him with the hand crossbow. Yeah, that'll be a plus two to ACL, because that's quite a lot of cover they have there. They're uh, mostly oh. surrounded by the wall. Let me click the button for that, and then click to change the Arculus to one hand. And we'll go ahead and... No ammunition is aside. God dang it. <laughs> it's fine. Andre, you're wonderful, but you just gotta remember ammunition. You got me this time, man, Foundry. Oh, a natural one. Uh, unfortunately, oh. unfortunately, that's uh you just hit the wall on the other on the side of the building you're in. Alright. Wait, watch where you're shooting. Alright. It's now the Black Tears turn who is next to uh Borok. Let's see. Uh, Borok has a shield in the way. Got a job to do, though. It's eager to do that job. Plus, they can visibly see that Borok is a little hurt. So, they're going to try their hand and they're going to go for it. Dagger strike to begin with. But a 15 dings off against the shield. Hey. Okay. Doesn't quite like that, that the shield got in the way, so it's then going to uh let's see. I'll try and get a bit of mobility, so two five foot steps for its final two actions to get back onto the bridge. Okay. Well, gonna call after him and go. It's like my father says, a man always only uses a knife when he's too cowardly for an axe. Ah. All right, it's now Andon's turn. All right, I think we're going to go um, second verse, same as the first, to be honest. It worked last time. 
and unfortunately he's 35 feet away. Because <laughs> otherwise I could hit both of them. Um, as it is though, I think I'm just going to make another frosty frosty ray. Sure. That attack roll for rare frost. Oh, I'm afraid not. That's a uh, 10 this time. All right. One action remaining. And I think I'm going to re-raise my shield. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, Kel, you're up. Uh, I think I'm going to spell strike this man. I'm not too pleased that he tried to grab me. All right. Uh, what are you spell striking? What? I shall spell strike with electric arc. Fair enough, all right. Because I can hit the other one. Uh, that's interesting. I would say... I would say the other one would have to make the saving throw. Oh, that does happen, yeah. They they make the same... They make the saving throw instead of my melee attack against them. All right, so let's get the one you're melee in first. So make your regular strike attack with your rapier against the one to the south of you, please. Uh, 17? Uh, that is a hit. Oh, here we go. Give us that damage, please. First, we'll start with the melee. Uh, that is just two points. All right, then uh, roll up the electric arc damage, please. Let me just press, cast that and damage. Yeah, just hit the damage button. Then we'll have the... Uh... Uh, that's four points of damage. All right, so the spell strike takes hold. Still up. But now we'll get the other one to make the reflex save. Ah. Uh, uh, succeeds, so takes half of four, so takes two. So how does this look? So you see Kel like pull back his uh, rapier to go to strike, and as he does, like the puff of poison. Uh, instead of a green pulse coming from his chest, a blue pulse comes from his chest and shoots down his striking arm. And as he strikes into the black tier in front of him, a piece of the electrical energy just shoots off to the side and hits the one behind him. <laughs> nice. Oh, right. So uh, you have one action left. Yes. And that one, I shall do my arcane cascade. All right, so you enter Arcane Cascade. All yes, right. I just need to figure out the damage type. Awesome. All right. I'll let you figure that, and we'll go to the Black Tears' turn. Okay. It's that one that is to the south of you. It shouts something. But... Unless you speak a certain language, I don't think you'll recognize it, Kelvin. I you totally forgot to choose languages. You don't, unfortunately. Joe, the one to the south of you, shouts out a strange language. Yes, yes, please be quiet. And then goes to strike you with the dagger, first action. All right, 25 to hit. Yep. It will not be silenced. Okay. It rolls for the first attack. Five points worth of damage. I'm alive. And then it's going to make another go. Uh, it's basically going to, even though it's silly to do, it's basically going to completely well into you. Uh, you get the strong impression, even without the check, that it's ride or die tactics. A five for a total of seven is not going to do it. And a six is not going to do it as well. As it just, yeah. starts, as it just starts to completely well into you. Shouting something in a language that you don't recognize. And seemingly have nothing left to lose. Bulrock, you're up. All right. Bulrock is going to move uh, ten feet. Heading over to this guy over here. I'm yep. going to target him, and I'm real tired of this little no-hit fight we're doing. I'm going to try and hit this guy. Alrighty. 
Come on. Mm, yeah, 16. I'll, I'll, I'll try that. 16's a hit. All right. AC 15. Beautiful. For seven damage. What's it look like? All right, he finishes yelling his father's quote about being a coward and then just rushes behind this guy while this guy's trying to retreat and just comes at him full force and just drives his axe into the guy's back while he's trying to get away. All right, lovely stuff. One action left, Borok. All righty, let's see. Not a lot of moving I can do here, but I'm going to just move... Uh, yeah, I'm just going to uh, take this opportunity to move 20 feet, kind of heading over this way. So one, two, three, and four. Uh, as he's heading this way, in case that guy maybe tries to book it or something, might oh. get in his way. All right. Let me just uh, remove this uh, black tear from the board. Oh, yeah, just have it to the side there for you. Okay. Isabella. Hello. Um, I'm going to just gently dodder over here. Uh, reload this little hand crossbow that I filched uh, yep. and try to shoot this man. Sure, clear shot. Not looking very healthy. That is a 16. 16 is a hit. Please give me damage. I have two. Uh, two points worth of damage. Okay, I ask you and invite you, Isabella, to describe your kill and to finish this combat. Uh, it, like, clips Lervin, uh, Kelvin's head. <laughs> it clips Kelvin Lervin. I'm sorry. Let's go with Kel. It, Kel. Clip, it clips Kel's hair just before it, like, flaks this guy in the, in the neck. All right. It's a pitting shot. But it's a decent shot. It connects, and the target falls dead. And I just sort of... She just sort of shakes it and goes, Oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Levin. This little thing has a lot more kick than I was expecting. It's taking a little getting used to. As I can tell. Loud snort. That was, also, that was also another conveniently timed thunder crackle as well. <laughs> I'm good at that. I should just call call this whole like ambient track conveniently timed thunder strikes. But it's interesting though, as you come out of the combat, because <clears throat> this garden that you see before you is kind of like a greenhouse botanical garden, because as as you look up, there is a glass style ceiling, a bit like a greenhouse, and outside you can see the raging thunderstorm still happening but this place it's almost like you stepped into the Morgani expanse it's absolutely lovely in here even artificial light to simulate sunlight is in this room despite uh, if it wasn't for the dead bodies lying around all over the shop it would be oddly very warm and comforting. Okay. What would you like to do? Floor is yours. All right, you. I wander up behind. Kelvin. Sit. <laughs> Sorry. You can see uh, Kelvin's <laughs> at. Do you know, like, when you're lost for words, he's just going, um, yep, yeah, what? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, in case you don't have the music on, that was like another conveniently timed thunder crackle. It's like, okay, sit. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so Kelvin takes a seat. All right, this will take me a minute, everyone, if you want to, like, take all that stuff or uh, what have you. Um... And... Oh, sorry, go, go ahead, Deb. I, I do apologize. Please proceed. Yep. And in takes, um, has a little jar, a little dirt, um, a jar and dirt. mud. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to go ahead. I can go ahead and um, give you a, a little healing plaster. 
Um, and over your wounds, I begin smearing this uh, magical dirt. And hopefully, we'll be able to make a treat wounds check. See, I set this up correctly. Sure, go ahead. DC 15, I believe. Perfect. There we go. All right, 22 uh, and uh, 12 points worth of healing to Kelvin. We'll apply that. Not bad, bro. All right. How'd you look So, up? Kelvin, you get smeared with this gross smelling mud. Um, I'm not careful about it getting on your clothes, around the wounds, or anything. And when oh, I'm done, I give you, with the muddy hand, a big slap on the back. And you're like, right then, lad, you're good to go. One of thank you. Two is that hygienic. I mean, I've been doing it to myself for years, and I ain't dead yet. Right. Okay, that takes ten minutes to do, if I can recall correctly. So in that time, That's Isabella, right. Isabella and Bullrock, uh, what are you doing? Uh, hmm. I'll top up my supply yeah. of... Uh, I assume these people also have hand crossbows. Uh, they all do, yes. Uh, except this right. one over here, uh, the one labelled uh, Alchem, as far as Dave pointed it out. Oh, uh, right, the one that's probably most worth checking over. <laughs> uh, yes, that one has the same as uh, all the others. They have um, a total of five silver pieces, crossbow belts, standard leather armour, a dagger, but they do have the, on them a, um, a potion of alchemist fire. Does anyone mind if I filch this? Go for it. Go for it. All right. Uh, so I'll top up my bolts back to 20. Just I just need to steal a couple from whoever. Doesn't matter. Sure. Uh, and I'll grab. I'll I've up. just increased them on my shield already. Uh, all right. No worries. Okay. Uh, I'll grab the alchemist fire. Sure. Uh, you pinch in the silver pieces as well? Oh, absolutely. We take okay. them away. So let's have a look. Uh, the ba -ba 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 -ba. So I just need to... Uh, let's see. I just... Life over there. There's four of them in total. So... Let's see. Five, ten, fifteen. Yep, yeah, okay. So silver pieces updated. And there's an alchemist fire in the loot box. Oh, there was a healing potion I took by accident. Uh, yes, there was also a minor healing potion that you picked up from a unfortunate dead halfling adventurer from last time, but nobody claimed. Right, one of one of you all should probably hold on to this. Uh, I'll take it. I might end up needing it by the end of the night. Carry everything else for now, because no one else seems to be picking anything up. <laughs> okay, so Boruch, as Isabella is searching the bodies, what are you doing? So, Balrog, uh first kind of makes his way down, like, along this little slope to where he can reach the water, and it'll take a minute and kind of wash his axe blade off in the water to get some of the blood off, looking perhaps a bit uncomfortable. This is his first, you know, time, you know, killing people and fighting and that sort of thing. But he's putting on a, a strong, hearty dwarven face and, you know, winces a little bit when he makes his way back up. He's definitely taking a bit of a beating today, but putting on a good, strong face on that kind of stuff, and uh, you yeah, just trying to kind of keep an eye out otherwise. Where are you standing exactly in washing, your, uh, washing yourself, uh, Bulrock? Uh, probably down here next to the rest of the party, kind of getting down there by the water. Alright, no worries. Okay, so ten minutes pass, and uh, all right, um, yeah, ten minutes pass, Kelvin gets healed up, and uh, everyone's technically back into exploration. Uh, what would you like to do? Uh, uh, Balric, you still need to take the... Uh, yes, I'm doing that. Uh, I'm that. From the loot. I just drag it over from it to my inventory? Yes, you do. Yeah. Got it. There we go. Wonderful. Right. Right. And then you? You need some? How are you feeling? I've been, I've been sore, but I'm not dying yet. 
I mean, I got plenty of mud in the jar. If you think we got the time, and the minute we wait, some more folks might be getting the axe. All right. Well, I can do some emergency stuff if we really need to. Let's get cracking. All right, let's go back into exploration. What is everyone doing for their uh, maneuvers? I'm going to do the raise shield again. All right, feel free to stick that up. I'm back into avoiding notice. Uh, give me a secret stealth check then, please. Calvin? Uh, once again, I'm looking for people with my Whisper Elf trait. Sure, secret perception and Anden. Yep, I'm searching. Uh, you searching for people or secret stuff? Oh, um... Because one's technically searched, the other is called seek. Oh, okay, in which case I am, yes, uh, definitely search. Okay. So, sorry, I need to ask one more time, Dave. Are you searching for people like Kelvin, or are you searching for traps, hidden doors, treasuries, blah, 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 etc.? I think in this situation, actually, it would be people as well. Um, the, if we wanted stuff from this house, we could... <laughs> well, actually, I, it would just be stealing. Um, from yes. dead people, it's fine, but from, you know, the person who owns the house... Sure, Lexi, what was up? I was going to say the search exploration action is supposed to be the the out of combat version of seeking. Uh, search, you seek particularly. Uh, let's see, 300 feet. It's capital seek, seek right? You are, cor right? you are correct, you are correct. Uh, yeah, okay, so. Okay, that's fine. I'm still learning exploration. I've gotten better at it, but generally I like people to pinpoint if they are searching for enemies or peoples. Oh, so, absolutely. Yeah, so I like to make it clear because I know that how perception works in Pathfinder 2E is technically I make the roles in secret and compared to everyone's perceptions, but I always liked to not take away from players' agency too much. So if somebody wants to, you know, pinpoint it and deliberately sort of like look for the bad guys, then I, I kind of keep that in my own mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. Uh, and then can I have a uh, secret perception check off you as well then, please? Yep. There we go. All right, fantastic. Okay, so out of these. All right. So I am so sorry to do this, but I just realized I could see the results of all of those rolls on the encounter tracker because it's still open. Oh. My bad. You saw nothing. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it's uh, no, it's okay. We'll let it. It's it's okay. We'll let it. Uh, I trust I you. I, I trust I you not know to that matter. Could happen, to be honest. Yeah, I trust you not to matter. Well, we, learn no, something. Okay, learn something. I'm going, there's an encounter tracker. <laughs> yeah, it's in the uh, cross swords icon in the uh, bar. Oh. So okay, right. Okay. Cool. All right. So. Everyone feel free to proceed forward, then. Oh, yeah. There's that door over there. There is that door over there. Should be further in. And in which way are you heading, friend? I'm gonna waddle around with them as well. All into right. the bridge. Okay. So... You take a look around, and everything seems A-OK -okay thus far. You're by the door, Kelvin. I am by the door. I'm going to move you up one. Just Let's uh, move back to your members. We are now out of this Galarian. OK. <clears throat> no. You proceed upwards. Yep. What would you like to do by the door? You hear nothing. Mm-mm. 
I don't hear anything. Do you want to open it up? Sure. I'll just grab the handle and open the door. She held up the ready. All right. So you open the door up, and what you see is a corridor full of bodies. And these bodies are all members of Lady Germandy's house guard. That is a oh lot dear. of dead oh. guard. Tarasma, bless those poor souls. Hmm. Must have been surprised. To be honest, as skilled as these black tears seem, the fact that you know I knew to this sort of thing and I can fight them decently. Makes me wonder how so many guards were taken out by them. They seem more like the sneaky stabby type. That's what I'm thinking. Hmm. It's safe to say they caught me. That they Oh, we got more doors to check, looks like. Yes. Alright. Oh. What a mess. It's definitely going to take some cleaning off after this. Just a smidge. That is not my job. Mm. Alright, so where's everybody heading? I guess well, the third one. Yeah, we're going to these doors, probably. Probably. Are we doing the same thing we did last time? Everyone gets a door. If we're okay to split. Shrug. Let's just do these two first. I'm not That's sure about one down. Oh, right. So. You all move yourselves into position, please. Where everyone's going to be before the doors open. Yeah, we'll do two time. All right. Stand here. Andon, will you enter... the, uh... this corridor? You kind of... being alert and attentive. Block out the sounds of the thunder and the rain and you are positive that you can ha hear the faint sounds of combat coming from beyond this door here oh hey hold up there's fighting through there well it's all I need our help then mm. Let me just absolutely me. just make sure you're ready for it everybody Everyone ready? I am. Ready. Alright, I'm gonna grab the door handle and just fling the door open. Right, go for it. Fling! You fling open the door and you see a modest side library that's lying in ruins. Bookshelves along the east and west walls have been emptied and knocked onto the floor from all this fighting. Standing on top of the table in the centre of the room is a bravoy looking noble, incredibly capable of a sword. And as you open the door, right on cue, by the power of convenience and plot, this individual is cutting down the last of a group, three black tier members, solo. However, this individual does look to be bloodied, though. This is what this uh, individual looks like. So, a Bravoy noble, a male human, Slick back hair, white skin, average build, but kind of bulky shoulders. However, incredibly good footwork, balance, and technique with his blade. He pretty much wears the traditional look of black on black with some more black and a little bit of green to accompany the black. The sword he is using. His eyes. His, the sword he is using to cut down. The last of the black tier members in this room is however custom made and to be honest with you even without a check or even without any particular law or background skill it's a decent looking sword as this individual draws his blade from the last of the black tier members sees the door open the first people or the first one he spots is Kelvin and a little bit of Andon 
So he holds the blade up. And then goes... Oh. It is you. Yes. Ah. You're not with uh -huh. them, are you? I saw you walk through the hall with Lady Germandy earlier. Oh, uh, yes. Or Lady Germandy's guard, sorry. Mm. Yes. Long day, long night, long night. Um, long night. Oh, yes. Ah, uh, he sheaves his sword away. So, there are the survivors. Good, 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 good. And then you can see him hold actually a wound that he has in his leather armor. It's a little bit of a gash, actually. Doesn't look too healthy. You're right there. Seems like you've taken a little bit of a blow. Ah, uh, well... When you deal with a frost giant, you don't walk away cleanly. There was a frost giant? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, uh, apologies. Let me hop down from the table. Um, I am friend. Ah, I see your companions. Greetings, one and all. Uh, my Boy, name you is... don't look so good. I'll oh. be... F I'll be fine. This is not the first kicking I have taken, and I doubt it will be the last. My name is Magar Vaughn, at your service. Pleasure. Oh, no. That one's looking pretty rough. I'm coming over with the mod. It's... Oh. no, no. Please, save your resources. The entire manor is under attack. I was coming in here to rest and recuperate and gather more resources. But these three black tears uh, decided to try and take advantage of my condition. However, I'm fine. I'm I'm in here to find a stash of healing potions that I know Jamandi has in here. Uh, I have consent to use them, so uh, let's see. Put them with. But uh, greetings. Nice to see other survivors. Hey, likewise. Hmm. Do you have a clue what's going on here, apart from being attacked? Well... He kicks one of the thugs on the floor. Well, I recognize this lot. And known as the Black Tears, if, uh... <laughs> the little tattoos don't give it away. They're, a uh, They're a gang. Situated out of Northern Bravoy. Pretty far south. But looks like they have tried to, uh, well, find some stones and actually try to step up in the world, it seems. This well, is... they seem pretty stupid to me. I mean, imagine trying to be stealthy and tattooing your organization on your face. He smiles at that. Aye, oh, it doesn't seem like the most smartest move in the world, I concede. But they're dangerous. They came in here well-equipped. And they have the backup of three unusual frost giants. That is very unusual. Like I said, who do you think gave me this wound? Oh, no, 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 no. You misunderstand me, sir. When I say three unusual soft giant, uh, frost giants, they're unusual in the fact that they are incredibly small for frost giants. They're only about, well, give or take, I would say about 10, 11 foot tall. And for frost giants, all of you would know, even from myth and legends, that's tiny. Frost giants are probably normally about 18 feet tall on average. So 10... I was going to say, the yeah. whole were big, but it wasn't that big. I thought maybe they batted it down slightly. Well, regardless... Well, do we presume that you've got one of them? I delivered a critical wound. And... They're injured. I was coming back from the West Wing to the East Wing after a private meeting, but... Well, they're injured. I don't think they can use their weapon now, but... There is a... One of these frost giants is actually guarding the entranceway to the main hall. Hmm. 
Mm, sounds like we're gonna have to chop them down. Please well, make our way there. Well, they've been weakened, but it's still incredibly dangerous. You'll see by the body count um, when you get into the room. Um, well, oh, there's another thing you need to watch out for as well. Ogres. This they is what... come with an army or something? Pretty much. This is what's weird about this entire situation. The Black Tears. Capable, uh, professional, but low down the ladder of professionalness. First two rungs at least. However, they've managed to secure the aid of ogres and frost giants. Sounds like they got some good backing. Yeah, indeed. Forgive me, I do not mean to be poignant, but I've given my name. May I ask yours? I mean, I have seen you. I've seen you, uh, and I have heard of you. Um, apparently, uh, you are the forwarding party by Lady Jamandi for the Stolen Lands expeditions. And for the record, I forgot to mention this before we actually started the game, but your cover story for not being at the feast with everybody else is that you were all you four were technically a forwarding party before the expeditions fully begun so that's the cover story that lady jamandi has given your group so he just says uh, forgive me i've asked your names uh, i've asked i've given my name but i may i have yours i i presume you are the forwarding party that lady jamandi mentioned hi Bulric of Clan Silverstone. Pleasure. Hi. Isabella. Pleasure. He looks at Kel and, uh, Anden. The cantankerous uh, little grump is Anden Bramblebeard. Don't worry about him. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking for these potions. <laughs> and I am Kelvin Leoven. Oh, I see. You are of the Bravoy. The Bravois, yeah, the Bravois Torch Law Firm. Yes. Well, I was. Oh, I see. Um. Well. Uh, okay. What a group. And and then. With your exploration action, I just need to check something. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Need to find a DC. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, and then you spot something unusual about this stack of shells over to here. Yep. Continuing to ignore this guy, now he's refused healing. And he said something about healing potions. Magor turns around and says, Ah, you've noticed it then. Yeah. Well, as you've noticed it, there's no point in hiding it. Uh, excuse me for a moment. Just steps up. And he opens a secret door as the bookcase opens up. He says, ah, Well, Lady Jamandi speaks highly of you. Yeah. If you're trying to help out the manor, please follow me. Uh, there may be some items here that can help you. He walks in. Let's and go. Follow Balrog follows him, but he actually keeps his shield kind of at the ready, because he's not 100% trusting at the moment. Alright. So, this small windowless room contains a large wooden trunk secured with a formidable looking padlock. As Rhaegar looks at the lock, looks at the chest, and he kind of face palms to himself, and he just slaps his head. He says, Ah. Oh. Of course it would be locked. They got you fool. Sorry, I beg your pardon. 
This is uh, Mandy's uh, secret stash. Um, I know about it because I have a permission and trust. In here, she normally keeps some emergency supplies just in case. Well, just in case of this very incident. It's a Sword Lord's manor after all, and sometimes the Sword Lords are targets. Um, I don't suppose you have found this, the key for this chest on your travels, have you? I know she keep she doesn't keep it on her person. She keeps it hidden. Um, I want to say no. I don't think so. No, I don't believe we have either. Hey, uh, I've not seen any keys, but should I manage to rustle up any replacements, I might yet get it open for you. Well, as a fellow sword lord of Pavoy. I can speak on Lady Germandy's behalf. Under such circumstances, with the manor being attacked, I don't think she would mind if those were to gather supplies in defense of the manor. As a matter of fact, I know she wouldn't mind. We'll have to keep an eye on these scoundrels to see if any of them are carrying the more delicate kind of tool. Understood. And he kind of walks back out and uh, takes a chair to the north of the room. He turns and he uh, looks back to Andon. Um, forgive oh. me. Uh, <laughs> I was wandering off. <laughs> he nods and he says, Would healing still be at all possible then? I did not wish for you to waste your resources, but uh, if it's still on oh, the table, uh, I... I in exchange, I will tell you what I know about these frost giants and these ogres. He uses mud, darling. There's plenty of it outside. Speaking of outside, since we know that we're looking for something now, why don't you head back out into the jungle? There was that big old statue up one side. That's where I'd hide a key if I was going to hide a key in the jungle. In the bit of decor that don't match. Right. Let me see tears then. Mm. All right then. So healing plus the medicine check. Yes, please. All right, go for it. Uh, that's just a failure, not a critical failure. Okay. Yeah, his wounds are actually. He's gonna be. You get the impression that he's gonna be fine. This whoever this is, uh, he claims to be a sword lord. He's tough. He's tough, but... Yeah. He's been beaten up quite a bit. So, what's happening while those ten minutes are happening, then? Hmm. Well, Andon seems to want, to want us to look at the statue outside, so I guess I'll go look at the statue outside. Sure. Uh, you approach the statue, and... Like I said, it's a statue of a half-elven woman with a shield emblazoned with a rose. Um, is Isabella trained in religion at all? Uh, oh goodness, no. There is something about the statue, though, considering your relationship with Lady Germandy. Mm -hmm. Something familiar. Uh, if you want, Lexi, you can make a untrained religion roll, uh, with, uh, because you know Lady Germandy. Ah, certainly. Why not? Because it may lead to a clue. <laughs> that one. Yeah, it's annoying you. You've known Mandy, as you call her, for years. And this statue is right on the tip of your tongue. But if you're searching over, you can give me a perception check, please. Just make it a public one. Sure. Fifteen. Okay. Let's see. That is exactly what you need. Huh. As you notice, just below the water line is a water tight compartment uh, 
Now, I'm not saying I've played TTRPGs before, but I've played TTRPGs before. Really? <laughs> Professional really? TTRPG player. Uh, Alright, I'll... Uh, I'll... roll up my sleeve. Struggle down to the ground. It's like, very loud struggling that probably no one hears because of the rain. Dip my arm in the water, pull it out. Alright. In there, you find a watertight chest of goodies. You find four minor healing potions, a small bronze key, and two potions that will require checks that you don't recognize. One is a sort of like almost fiery orangey liquid, while the other one is of a purple liquid. And that has all gone into the loot box for you. Uh, can I... Because I have alchemical crafting, uh, can I at least recognize them as alchemical or magical at a glance? At a glance... Your instincts are saying magical. Alright, not my kind of thing. I'll bring the box to the rest of the party. So I, I come in grumbling and making an old lady do hard labor, bending down on these old knees. Don't you see the brace on my leg? Well, does that mean Andon was right? Yes, yes, and I'll pop the box of down on the table. Of course, Andon was right. Andon's always right. Ha! Key, several potions, and a few little bottles of healing gloop. Ha, it's like my father always says, if you hide something where no one would think to look, then everyone would know where to find it. Agar turns around and he says, Ah, yes, that's it. Yes, it's under... Oh, so that's what... <laughs> he smiles and as he has a small laugh, that's so her. Let me guess, under the statue of Milani out in the garden. Uh, a statue of someone? Milani? Yeah. Is that who that was? Yes, it's... Uh, and this kind of clicks with you now. As he turns and he says, yes, Milani, it's... Uh, it's Mandy's patron deity. Um, oh, Milani! Yes. The Everbloom. Indeed, yes. One of uh, Aodin's former heralds, uh, sister to Iumide. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Lady Germandi has followed her for years. But, uh, yes, uh, oh, <laughs> he looks in the chest. He looks, he looks in the um, watertight case if you open it up. Yes, these are emergency combat supplies. She's yeah, she has stashes of these all over the house, just in case for this very very instant. You think the other chest is another stash or a trap for anyone who gets too curious? From what she told me, it's another stash in case of emergencies. Although I have been told that there is a few pouches of gold and silver in there, quite a few, and a logbook, uh, that's for staff wages. Sounds like you two are pretty close, eh? He shrugs. I'm a sword lord of Pavoy. A low-ranking one, but still one nonetheless, and, uh, Lady Jamandi is a teacher and a personal friend. Uh, I'm also doing the expedition into the Stolen Lands. She wants me to set up a settlement, uh, make a deal, and cut trade with, um... <sighs> Sorry, he holds on to his sight. <sighs> Sorry. Basically, at my settlement, she wants me to establish an Aldori Sword Lord school there to teach the Aldori style, but not all the Sword Lords are happy about that, but... You might need to stop talking for a bit. Yes, Vaughn, why don't you take this little key? You can avail yourself of the potions in the other room and we'll head on our way. See if there's anyone else who can't be helped. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. 
and he turns and he walks in and he says opens up the chest taking the key and he says hey this one has a healing potion here of a stronger variety there's two of them I will only need one do you want the other I dare say Balrook could use it I you probably could okay so he'll take the bronze key and he will uh, put into the loot box uh, one lesser healing potion. Nice. He downs uh, the he downs the other straight away. Permission to forcibly distribute uh, healing potions to the party. <laughs> well, the lesser's already gone. <laughs> yeah. Yes. More. I'm just making sure. I'm just going to make sure everyone takes the healing potion, given the last one was forgotten for a bit. Well, that there's four of them, right? So we can each take one. Yeah. Three of them now. All right. Dave's got theirs. Also, there's two weapons in here that she's left stashed. Uh, if you wish to take them, as long as you use them in defense of the manor, I don't think she would mind. Uh, let's see. There's a long sword here. Uh, it's got a plus one. It's got a. It's it's got an enhancement rune in it. Uh, out of game for a second. Lesser rune of potency. Yeah, it's uh, out of game for a second. Um, Vaughn, Mega Vaughn identifies for you because he's a lot higher level um a plus one long sword and a plus one mace as he turns and he says as long as it's in the defense of the manor do any of you want to use this stuff uh, unfortunately it's no good to me hmm. not my kind of weapon i'm afraid I don't feel right using something other than an axe. He actually. Yet... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> it is a. It's a. Oh, I don't feel like, like using something other than an axe. And yet, you're gonna take it and you're gonna use it because there are lives at stake. All right. All right. That's fair enough. All right. Give me the. Uh... Hmm. I suppose a mace is more of a, a dwarf style. Very well. Here you go. He puts into a uh, loot box a plus one mace. Uh, if Lady Germandy has a problem, tell her to speak to me. Oh, I just hope she's all right. She's going to be f But, uh, yeah. Southeastern corner. Watch out for the frost giant. He's already got a body count. Uh, would someone, before we move on, hold on to these unusual liquids? Preferably oh. someone who can identify them at a later date. Let's have a look. Magical. I could probably give it a go later on. So yeah. long as you have Arcana. Uh, yeah, actually, I do. Actually, I'll double check the rules on this. And uh, the, Bestow per the Bestow Curse podcast actually helped me out with this big time as well. Um... To identify any magical items, you need to be trained in any one of the four schools on your skill set. So, religion, nature, arcana, or occultism. Yeah. So long, I... Leoban should have arcana, and... I do. I presume Andon has nature as a druid. Nah. No? Of course I do. I, I, can't remember. I was gonna say that would oh even I would go, what the hell? I'd be Mild panic. Druid. I'd be impressed. It's a fixed skill for a druid. Yeah, exactly. I have an axe. Yes, you, you do. <laughs> it's alright, Balrook. We have other specialties. Uh if it's alright with you lot, I think I'm gonna drink one of these minor potions. Sounds like a fabulous idea. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Levin, if you t could take the unusual liquids yep. for now. I shall. Four seven. Not bad. Receive them. So raise up to a nineteen. All right, party down in potions. You use another one, or did you just click by accident? Uh, I only use one. Oh, okay. 
I don't no. know why it, uh, that was weird. I don't know why I did that. It's strange. We'll take the first one of seven, though. So, all right. Yeah. Some time passes. Mega, Mega Vaughn turns and says to you, ah, good luck to you all. And just one final thing. I have two companions. If you can find them, hopefully they'll still be alive. Uh, help them out if you if you can. Uh, their names, a man, name of Bren, and then uh, their companion, a friend of mine. Their name is Cassidin. I hope they're still alive. Uh, you can keep an eye out for them. We got separated when the ogres attacked. If they're nearly as if they're near as hard as you, Lord. Van, if they're nearly as hardy as you, Lord Van, I'm sure they'll still be kicking around here somewhere. I hope so too. Good luck to you. And with that, I think that's actually a nice little place to close this little section of Kingmaker. Nice. Away. All right. So, who would like some experience? Uh, only if you're offering. Only if I'm offering. Well, I am offering. <laughs> only if you're offering. I am well, offering. Long as a positive number. Uh, yes, I am offering experience. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, for defeating uh, the Black Tears, uh, are in the um, in the in the Water Garden. Please uh, take eighty experience points for that encounter. Is to 170. And for making a good impression on uh, Rhaegar Vaughn and working with him and allowing to follow through with the reveal of the secret room and allowing him to take the potions, another 30 experience points. 200. Very nice, even number. Yep. All right. The there. All right. So, um, yeah, there's ogres and frost giants. How does that sound to everybody? Oh. Uh, sounds uh, like I'm glad I picked up an alchemist's fire. They were told they can't do nothing with an axe in their head. Well, in doubt, I have magical secret potions. Nothing can go wrong. All right. Well, thank you all very much for playing. That was fun. So next time, it looks like they, uh, the party might have some... <laughs> giant problems but on behalf of myself dave greg jack and lexi thank you all very much for watching and we hope to see you next time for some more kingmaker but until then take care everyone bye bye